don't worry about what the masses are going to say or what comments you're going to get, or if you're not going to get a lot of likes or you are going to get a lot of likes, just start posting your passion, no matter what skill level. Welcome to the Passion Behind the Art Show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pinkham. What's up? Guess what? It's another week, another amazing guest, and another opportunity for me to bring you value through someone else's story. But before we jump into this week's episode, I just want to let you know that our Patreon page is up and running, finally. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's basically a way to support a specific endeavor that you're interested in. And of course, the endeavor that we're talking about right now is Passion Behind the Art, the podcast. So I'd really appreciate it if you would support the podcast through our Patreon page. All you need to do is just go to passionbehindart.com and look for the Patreon tab and it will take you directly to the page. This would mean the world to me and everything that I'm doing in regards to the podcast. A large percentage of what I do in regards to the podcast. As a matter of fact, all of it is free. And I would really appreciate you if you could just help support the podcast with as low as $2. Nothing too crazy. $2. And of course, there's various tiers you can support with more. And the more you support, the more incentives you get. So just go to passionbanderart.com and check out the, our Patreon page. This would help me out a lot. There will also be a link in the show notes. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Well, I am excited to have Veronica Ruiz on the Passion Behind the Art Show. Veronica, welcome. Thank you so much, Daryl, for having me on. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes, yes. Super talented. She's just dominating over there. Um, she does a lot of collaboration with my good buddy, Tyranny um, Colin, over at uh, Craylography. So it's pretty cool to have you on. Yeah, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. He 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 makes it very clear that you mean business. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, right? Means business. That I like, do. She means business. <laughs> It's just pretty cool. So let's jump right into it. How did Veronica's creative journey start? Well, I, I ever since I was a small child, I loved to draw. So I was just drawing all the time. And so eventually when I went into college, I wanted to go into the an, like the animation field. Um, but I never really found a track in that area that I liked. So I ended up in graphic design. And while I was okay. in graphic design in college, I got exposed to hand lettering and that just led me down the rabbit hole of, oh, my God, I love drawing letters. I can do this uh, for a living. OK, yeah, let's do this. And um, I just started practicing and I haven't stopped. Oh. OK, <laughs> cool, cool. So what was it like? What draw draw you to the like the animation side like in early? It's just growing up watching, of course, Disney, any just any <laughs> animated film. That's all I pretty much watched growing up. Animated cartoons, movies, even now, anime like anything animated, I love it. I just fell in love with it. And I would always watch all the special features on every DVD I would get uh, yeah. behind the scenes. And I was like, that sounds so cool, <laughs> you know, but I went down a different path. But oh. I still have a passion for it. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's cool. So what was like your favorite Disney uh, top two? Because I know it's hard. <laughs> right now, my favorite Disney movie is Hercules. I love Hercules. Um, and if you want to throw like Pixar in there, Wally, so that way we have one for me. Oh, <laughs> sweet, sweet. Those sweet, are my two sweet, faves. Sweet. All right, okay. You can't switch it up on me there. I thought you were gonna say Lion King or something, but uh, okay, I like that. Ooh, that was actually funny thing. My aunt used to tell me, which I don't remember that. I played the VHS tape so much, or I made her play it so much for me when I was a kid that she can still recite the entire movie. By memory, and I I do love it, but not the same clearly as I was when I was a child. 
like you just said two amazing things the fact that you could recite all of that stuff and secondly vhs like yeah <laughs> so nobody knows what the heck vhs is anymore like does anybody even have a vhs player i know, that's I, know what I, I still have i still have stuff i want to watch <laughs> that i haven't you know they haven't been transferred but it's almost oh impossible my goodness, that's so amazing i still have one uh we never use it but i still have one i still I, my wife still got a bunch of tapes so vhs oh man for those who don't know google it all right <laughs> <laughs> all right so okay so you you changed directions and um, you're starting to do graphic design. You fell in love with lettering. So kind of what kind of was it a class you took that got you into lettering? Like what exposed you within to that the, like the generic graphic design course title, you know, that we had. We had a lesson one day on hand lettered logos. And they're like, look, this is what you had to do before Photoshop and Illustrator. Everything was done by hand. And we actually had like a senior professor, he was somewhere in the administration that brought up all his like hand sketch logos from back in the day on, you know, like that hard, that blackboard I was like, look, these mm -hmm. are all the ones I did before, you know, computers were a thing. And I was always in love with also with sign painting, you know, just out in the mm -hmm. wild and I didn't really know what it was. And, you know, we started studying people like Jessica Heesh and all that stuff. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like drawing letters is a thing is a thing <laughs> yeah like that's i was like because you know you're trying to find your way what in design do you want to do there's so many tracks that you right. don't really think about until you get in there and i was like right. hand lettering lettering yes yes thank you and that was like right at the beginning where everyone it was starting to like get big you know like get into modern it. calligraphy okay. brush get. style and all that was just starting mm -hmm. so i was jumping in on that with very little resources compared to now now it's amazing oh, it's like, that's out yeah, there yeah <laughs> i mean you guys are creating resources so you know it's 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 a lot more now and it's a lot more to offer when it comes to that a lot of more a lot more opportunities too that's for sure <laughs> so all right so you graduated from college like did you like just start dominating in the lettering field uh, from there no like... actually <laughs> i didn't even go into the design field um i already had a job at the time i was working for disney with my husband um and i was just doing food and beverage but i loved it and i kind of stayed there for a little bit just trying to figure out if i could get into the design area there which of course is very difficult um and i actually got into personalization so in the christmas store at the downtown disney or what's now called disney springs we would hand write people's personalized ornaments for them so they'd come pick one out and say mm. i want it's written on it for like my memory and so i sat there for two christmases and you you're there for four a minimum of 40 hours a day just writing on ornaments and i had already just started like practicing lettering but that's where i really got to practice my letter forms at least the script ones because i was writing 10 12 hours a day you know, seven days a wow. week going leading up to Christmas because it gets insane, you know, with like 10 other artists. Um, so that is what really pushed me into like really practicing and getting into the habit of doing it every single day. Wow, that is so cool. Like you're building <laughs> up tons of muscle memory like yeah. just by doing that. Wow. And like I, I have pictures of ornaments from the beginning towards the end, and it's a significant improvement in such a short amount of time. <laughs> so I am so grateful for that because that really, really helped. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Yeah. How, I didn't even know that that's a thing. Yeah, it, well, I had always – I've seen it kind of in passing. And like if you don't really know mm -hmm. someone that knows about it, you don't really know the job exists – but I had a friend who worked right. in merchandise. She's like, hey, you love to write letters and draw and stuff. She's like, why don't you try out for this? Because you have to try out. You can't just do it. You okay. have to take like two different tests, 40 hours of training before you're even accepted to even try to do it. Um, and I was like, that wow. sounds awesome. I'm going to try out. And luckily, everything went well. Because um, okay. <laughs> it was still at the very early stages. I was not doing anything close to what I'm doing now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So it went from there. Um, so where did... Your what was the next thing that kind of propelled you a little bit to in your direction? So from Orlando, that's when we moved to my husband. And I moved to Colorado because he got a new job opportunity. We want to change the scenery. We just wanted to get out. Um, and when out actually like I was tr I was hunting for a job in Colorado and I couldn't find one. And so one day I'm like, you know what? I really want to. I, I had kind of posted some things on Instagram, like some art, but I also had it mixed with like my my photos of you know personal life and all that. Nothing really concentrated. And one day I posted a video of me filling in like a letter A with watercolor 
And then I posted another one and I was just sitting there and I was waiting for, you know, applications to get responses. And so I just started posting different videos of me using watercolor, kind of lettering and all that stuff. And it's, it started getting likes and views. And I was, you know, I was just using hashtags at the time because that's all I knew to do. That was before, you know, the algorithm and all that. And before I knew it, it, it was just steadily rocketing up. Just the more I posted, the more I guess I got pushed out to people's explore pages using the hashtags. Okay. And, you know, it wasn't as, conge- you know, as much stuff right. as there is out now. So that's what I'm attributing it to because it seemed like that first few months, it just, and even within a week, I felt like I went from having, you know, like a hundred something, you know, friends and family to finally getting to like a thousand followers where I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, I, you know, just wait, looking for a job, that's how it started happening. And I just was like, okay, the key is that I have to post like every day. I have to I have to be consistent here. And so that's what I just started doing. And that was back in 2015. And now fast forward to 2019. And it's grown beyond my wildest dreams. And I'm so grateful. <laughs> wow. Wow. So tell me, like, some of the, like, from 2015 to now, like, just give me an idea of like some of the, I guess top two, top three of the opportunities that came from just you doing the consistent lettering. So the biggest one obviously would be like meeting Colin of Craigraphy Tierney Studio. Um, we found each other through Instagram. I eventually, you know, I found the Craigraphy movement and started mm-hmm. participating. And then he saw that I was participating. He, you know, contacted me. Was like, hey, do you want to host one of the Saturdays? You know, he was posting weekly prompts. And from there, we just kept in contact and we liked working with each other. And now, like, you know, we're, we're building a future, you know, a future mm-hmm. brand. Nice. And that stuff. Um, so that's like the biggest one that I'm really grateful for. Um, I've also just been able to work with companies like bigger company names, you know, nice. offering, you know, p- partnerships like, hey, we'll send you product and pay you to make this post and we'll send you some stuff and being able to get, you know, opportunities like that, that. I would have never done it had I not gotten the followers that fortunately love to see what I do. <laughs> um, so that's definitely been really, really cool. And it was so weird to first get approached by someone and be like, wait, you want me to, you want to send me stuff and pay me to make a post for you? Okay. That's, that's cool. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, I think it's just the friendships and like the online friendships that I've made, like, Meeting so many people like you, of course, Colin. I have, you know, Michelle of Nice Breakfast. I love her. Um, great. Uh, a lot of great handles out there for the lettering artist. And just just meeting people and actually connecting and becoming friends, even though we still have not met. We hope right. in the future to meet. It's just it's been incredible how you can connect with people by, you know, posting about your favorite interests. And someone's like, hey, I love that, too. Let's, you know, you just start chatting and it becomes more than just lettering. It becomes about like sharing different passions and just mm-hmm. connecting with someone else, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'll say that's probably out of all the things that this podcast has done for me. That's probably the biggest thing, like just the relationships. Like it's just been amazing, the relationships that I've just been able to. Get. I know, and you're rocking it with you know, like interviewing so many people. And I remember that day that you were like live interviewing like <laughs> one person like every thirty minutes or every hour. That was crazy, but amazing. <laughs> like props to you for that because that was I can only imagine how draining that was. <laughs> yes, I was literally done after. I was I couldn't do <laughs> like anything. A week. <laughs> yes, I had to take a week off for real. I did from just <laughs> anything social related. It's pretty draining, but it was amazing. Yeah, but, it's really um, worth it. So, all right. So let's jump back into more current. All right. So, yeah. so who, what would you say was the hardest thing that you had to do to kind of hardest thing you had to overcome? Um, so in life in general, and that has kind of shaped me and made me appreciate life more is I lost my mom back in 2010 mm. and, you know, coping. And that was Sorry before I had graduated. That. Thank you so much. Um, before I graduated college and, you know, she never met my husband, but she knew about him, you know, we were dating at the time. Um, so that's something that has really, of course, affected me, but also pushes me forward to keep going, especially with this passion. Cause she was such a humongous supporter of me and anything I wanted to do and always encouraged me to draw and just pursue my dreams essentially. So like everything that I do 
in the back of my mind is also for her because I know she would be proud and she'd be like, you need to not give up. You need to keep going and get there because you can get there. (laughs) So that was tough, but it's, you know, you try to always just build it into a positive and use it as like Mm -hmm. a pushing off and you got this kind of thing. (laughs) Wow, that's so powerful. That is so powerful. Wow. (laughs) Wow. 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 So, um, I did not expect that, but um, that's really powerful, though. That is really powerful. That is really powerful. And then how much you used it to kind of galvanize you. You know what I mean? Such a um, tough situation. You used it to galvanize you. That is really powerful and ex- inspiring. My goodness. So um, who are some of the people that kind of rallied around you to get you through this hard situation? You know what I mean? Who are some of the people that till this day you kind of build your support system with well fortunately all my friends and family you know i don't have a humongous family but the ones that i had they were just so supportive and they're still so supportive and they just they all came in to support me and be like you know my my aunts you know are now like my second Mm. moms and they always kind of were but now especially and but my husband first of all like we had just met we were just dating for like a month and he he we were living long distance he came to visit me and my family he met my entire family at once you know very early on and they all fell in love with him and he's just the one the main rock that i've wow. had you know anytime i have a bad day or i'm doubting myself uh but even in the positive he supports me like every marker paper anything i want to buy he's like all right if it makes me Let's happy do it. <laughs> you know he's the best instagram husband taking every photo he, he knows he can't eat anything until I take the perfect photo with my lettering in it on the table. And he's just like, that's fine. You do what you do. That is amazing. <laughs> he, what's, your, what's, your, what's your husband's name? His name is Chris. Shout out to Chris. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Represent for the husbands out there. <laughs> he's doing a good job. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so cool. That is so cool. So cool. So cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit more serious, like business wise. Like what are some of the ways mm-hmm. that you are generating revenue with your skill with this lettering so right passion now, so my my focus for my lettering i want is to to teach mm-hmm. so occasionally colin and i will do workshops together cool. and that's one way um but mainly is through my etsy shop i sell worksheets of all different kind of lettering styles and that's how i reach people and i try to make them as approachable and affordable as possible mm-hmm. um so they're like downloadable stuff so I don't, you know there's nothing that has to be printed so that way anyone can begin and kind of get that first step and so i and my Etsy shop is my huge thing. And, you know, I do commission some people are like, Oh, can I have this quote lettered or I want this and that. So kind of get through that. And my next plan is like my YouTube channel. Yeah. I have one, but it's not, I haven't been consistent in uploading, but I'm working on that now. Join the club. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I know it's like keeping tabs of all the different social media people want you on. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So like, what are some of the ways that you kind of grow your Etsy shop? I know you have a large following on Instagram. Is that like the main way how, you know, you generate? Yeah, that's when I look at my stats, that is the main point of entry for most of my Etsy sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's my focus. Etsy, you know, has bumped up their advertising and they do have hashtags within their listings as well that really? you can use. Wow. So I, yeah. So when you list something, you can put tags. So when people just type in the search bar, lettering, calligraphy, brush lettering, whatever. Um, and I always also use my name in the hashtag because some people will just type Veronica letters because they're not really sure where my shop is if they can't find it. Um, so I use that within Etsy. And then, of course, anytime I post a YouTube video, I'll talk about my shop or link it. Um, but Instagram stories are huge. Instagram posts. I have, I think my most popular post is a compilation of all my worksheets that I kind of did to show people what I offer. Oh, and really? I'm just grateful. Yeah. So, and then now that Instagram has highlights, you know, I can show everyone and then kind of save it and everyone can kind of just comb through and be like, Oh, is this something I'm interested in? And then just swipe straight up to the worksheet. So that's my primary like advertising method at the moment and it's been working pretty well so i haven't really tried too much else yet (laughs) oh that's cool that's cool that's good to know like it's i haven't been on etsy in like years and it's kind of cool to see that they're kind of like really evolving it looks like it's really evolved in the in the machine (laughs) 
Yeah. yeah, it helps. I mean, I do I do want to do my own website, you know, with my own shop, but that is it takes a lot more time. Mm-hmm. Um, Etsy does take, you know, a portion of your sales, um, but they do they keep all they do all the record keeping. So right. like, you know, for tax purposes, they have all that information easily ready for you. So they kind of take away some of the work. So it's like a balance. Right. You know, right. you pay a little more to have more convenience kind of thing. Yeah, makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it. And as if it works right now for you, you know what I mean? Why change? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why change? Why change? All right. Let's get to some fun stuff. All right. What's that product that you cannot live without that's not your phone? Okay. I did two because I have a cheat one. Nice. And then I have like a real. Okay. So my cheat one is the big brick that charges my phone on a daily basis when oh. I'm not home. <laughs> <laughs> because I do not leave the house. I have a super duper heavy one that can charge my phone about four times a day if I need to, because I drain it at least once in the middle of the day with, you know, all my Instagramming and social media and, you know, Facebook, not Facebook games, but just mobile games that I play. So that is something that I do not leave the house without. And then I can also charge the husband's phone or whoever else is with me. Um, so that's like something that I can't live without. Cool. But non technology related, you know, actually essential. Um, is my water bottle, which is kind of odd, but I drink so much water that I constantly have like some sort of, you know, like, what is it? A Getty or, you know, my husband has a, oh my God, I'm losing the, the brand name. One of those, you know, stainless steel ones. Yeah. Okay. I know you're talking um, about. I um, always need, that's, that's something that I always have on me. I always need. Is it called Thermos? Is the brand called Thermos or something like yeah, that? Yeah. Thermos is a brand. Oh my gosh. Hydro flask. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 I like them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So I always have something like that on me, especially in the summer. Um, but that's something that I can't live without besides, you know, like a marker or a pen, some sort of writing utensil. Yeah. I dig that. I always... dig that. And that's a good one. Trust me. <laughs> someone said that toilet paper. So you can't. can't... <laughs> hey, but that's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> pretty hygienic. I appreciate that answer. <laughs> Oh, sweet, sweet. Uh, Book recommendations. Okay. So as far as like design, I like a lot of design type related books. Nice. Um, And Type Matters is my go-to glossary, you know, for typography and learning the anatomy of typography and how typography works helps so much when you're lettering. Yep. Especially when you start experimenting, you need to still, you can break the rules, but you still need to know how to break them properly. Right. You got to know the rules. So I always... (laughs) reference that you know we can look it up online but it's kind of nice to have like a physical you know books every once in a while so i love type matters um and anything louise feely she's one of my favorite designers and so all of her books are phenomenal Sweet. i love her books and her aesthetic and her style and it's just oh, it's wonderful to see her work and all that um but besides that i don't really read too many books nice on a day-to-day basis um i'm pretty much reading online like I will nerd out right now. I read a lot of like fan fiction for my favorite movies and like TV shows. So I read other people's wonderful work out on the internet. Uh, Sweet, but that I works. don't read too much. Well, those those are pretty good. Those like, are pretty so good. Those, those are pretty good. I I like those. I like those. And you know, it's funny when you said about typography. It's just like as you learn more and more about type, you realize how important it is to design. Like it makes and breaks. This is good design. Yeah. For it, the, the differentiator it's, from good to yeah. bad design. It's crazy. Yeah, you can have a great icon, but if that that type, that mark is not one, you're just, it's going to flop. It's yes. not going <laughs> to. That's the perfect word. It's going to flop. Facts. <laughs> All right. So, what's the first hour of Veronica's day like currently? Okay. So, legit, I wake up and I am on my phone. I am that person. My first, my wake up time is my me time to check all my social media. I check Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr. And I, ha- you know, I'm, I play whatever mobile game I'm playing at the time. I go into that and kind of let myself wake up that way. Okay. Um, cool. And then, you know, of course, you know, the regular getting ready in the bathroom kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's either I'm straight out the door going to work, or if I'm a home day, I'll go straight to eating breakfast. I have to eat. I'm hungry all the time. As soon as I wake up, I'm like, I'm ready for <laughs> breakfast. Let's go. <laughs> So, it's hey, I'll just be and then breakfast. I, I dig it. I, I I'm with you on that. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. That is that is cool. That is that is cool. So you you still use Tumblr? How is that yes. work? How is that working for you? Still pretty active. Still pretty yeah, um, popping. It's a it's a purely yeah it's a purely personal like 
just what I'm interested in. Okay. I don't post. I don't actually post my own things. I just reblog. Just okay. you know, I follow my favorite shows. You know, all that kind of stuff, and just see what people are posting, talking about it, discourse, all that stuff. So okay. as a purely like that, that's how I use it. Okay. I've never used it for like an actual blog to like share my stuff. Mm-hmm. I just kind of use it for fun. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's it's, like it's your really personal fun outlet. I'm stressed out about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's like your personal outlet. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So what's next? What's next for for Veronica? Um, well, right now it's my main focus will be, of course, like I try to do seasonal offerings in my shop. So like I try to offer fall, like, you know, I'm trying to get more into like coloring pages, whether that be lettering and illustration, because I do love to illustrate, even though I don't do it very often. Um, and then just building up my YouTube, I want to share so many like small techniques and like little things with people. But on Instagram, it's not really easy to archive that. And then you don't never have enough, you know, length of time. So that's my main focus is getting down all the ideas I want to share with everyone and then kind of just slowly putting it out there permanently so people can access it at any time. So that's like my main focus. And then of course I have stuff going on with Colin over at Crayligraphy and all that, but we're still getting that in line. So can't say too much yet. (laughs) Cool. 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 Oh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to like seeing you getting the YouTube up and running. Like I'm really, really digging that because I'm, I'm trying to get mine, but it's more of like a, I'm, I know that I like stories, so I'm more of a, like a documenting story type deal. That's kind of cool. So I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to execute that, but at least I I'm a, I got a starting point. Yeah. Well, and you can start small, just a few minutes, and not yeah. pressure yourself to give to do like a huge long video. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. It's like I don't have to think big. Just start small. Post, you know, a couple minutes here and there of something, and then build yourself up because it is a long process to record. This edit. all the stuff to set up to record, edit, and then exporting, which is Gosh. the biggest nightmare. And especially oh if you hate God. like one wrong thing and then you have to redo it again. I've had that before. I've been in four days in limbo of exporting a video because something kept going wrong. It's crazy. <laughs> and you know what's funny? It's like I just like the beginning of this year, I just got the editing of the podcast off my hands. And it's like I love editing. I want to pull back video now. Like it's crazy. <laughs> so that's probably the most the, the 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 hardest part about all of this just the editing and stuff like that yeah, yeah the video it's actually time ready yes super. Yeah. so as we are getting ready to close like what advice would you have for a creative anyone out there okay so i would just tell anyone just please get started i we're all scared we were all scared to start Don't worry about what the masses are going to say or what comments you're going to get or if you're not going to get a lot of likes or you are going to get a lot of likes. Just start posting your passion no matter what skill level because we all started at the same place and some of us didn't start posting until later but a lot of us did start posting early and we still got plenty of supporters and they've grown with us and seen us. So just please start posting you know, um, the likelihood of someone commenting something negative is very low. You know, you we get it every once in a while but – it's very rare and just know it's the internet. Everyone's every once in a while someone has an opinion and it's okay. Right. Like and even if you get something negative, that is not a reflection on you and is a, is a reflection on them and that way that way they want to present themselves to the internet. So kinda I just kinda shrug it off. You know, it does bother me a little bit because you know, we all have feelings, right. but you know, just it's it'll be okay. And just post. And just just get your stuff out there because most people are, you know, they're making stuff, but they're just so hesitant to get online, yes. which I totally understand. But yeah. it's OK. And don't worry about if you don't explode right away. For a lot of people, like it takes years of building, you know, months and months and years sometimes to build up, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> Patience, man. Patience. It's, yep. it's, it's yeah. Yeah. And that thing. in practice. Yes. Practice, practice in this craft. You have to practice so much you are never going to get it right away no one gets it right away it's just a lot of muscle memory a lot of practice i literally have practiced every single day since i started i can there's only been a small handful of days that i haven't at least picked up a pen and done something even if it's not like a huge piece i'm always lettering i have a sketchbook in my purse everywhere i go all the time no matter how small the purse is there's a sketchbook in there and i'm or i'm drawing on a napkin you know, with a pen, there's always something. So just keep practicing and keep going. And that's how you'll get better. <laughs> and that also means like you might not be sharing this stuff, but you're still practicing. Exactly. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. 
Veronica, this has been awesome. Where can people go to find you, learn about all the awesome stuff that you're doing? Thank you. Um, they can go to at Veronica Letters on face. Um, oh my gosh, not on Facebook anymore. Sorry, on Instagram. <laughs> and then I'm at Veron. I'm I'm titled Veronica Letters on YouTube. If you want to follow me there and subscribe to me there, I will be posting more. Um, I am on Twitter, but I that's more of a personal thing, and I write that. You know, I just kind of repost my favorite stuff on there. But if you want to follow me in there, you're more than welcome to. Um, but. Instagram is my main. If you want to DM me, email me, you can do that from there and I can help you out with anything you need. <laughs> this has been awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Like we've been trying to make this happen. I'm so glad we I finally know. did. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. I hope it's been super valuable to you and you're now ready to take your audience building, your community growing to the next level to help you and help me build our empire for lack of a better word or just to build our thing um, remember to stop by iTunes Passion Behind the Art and leave a review and subscribe it's very important to me it helps the podcast grow and it makes me feel good to kind of hear from you guys to know what you like about this podcast what it's done for you so jump on iTunes and subscribe and leave a review passion behind the art be blessed <laughs>